Howdy with this first uh, YouTube video as we move into the online format. I want to go over the revised uh, uh, schedule and then go over the APA medical essay. Make sure you understand what we're looking for there and how to narrow your topics down. Uh, you'll see all these documents there on the content page for uh, the course, uh, which you should be familiar with anyway. Uh, you'll see the revised schedule right there. Uh, and you'll see the APA medical research essay assignment right, uh, right there under essay assignments. Uh, I've already got these open. It's easier for me to highlight things. Uh, but if you take a look at the revised schedule, you see we're on ex the extended spring break. Uh, I'm doing this video on Monday, March 16th. Uh, after that, we're back in class, right? But we're going to be doing this online. Shouldn't, since it's mid-semester, it shouldn't be a, a ginormous adjustment. It's an adjustment because you got to figure out you know, how you're going to get things done on your own, so to speak. Not so much on your own, but regulating your own time and managing your time. It can be a challenge uh, for the online format a little bit. Uh, but when we come back, uh, assignments are still going to be due on Thursdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm going to push the time back to 11.59 p.m. Uh, if we say midnight, students get confused about whether it's Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever. Uh, so it'll be uh, like on Tuesday the 24th, uh, Journal 7 through 9 will be due on uh, that day, Tuesday the 24th, but at 11.59 p.m. or by that, by that time. You can always turn stuff in early, right? Um, after that, we'll be working on the APA medical essay. I'm going to ask you to send me your topics, and uh, then after that, you're going to send me your draft. We won't be able to do peer reviews. We're not going to have enough time since we've lost that week. Uh, so I'll go over your drafts. Uh, I'll also send you out a self-review, uh, and then that final version will be due on the 7th. Uh, then we'll move on to the double speak essay. Uh, we'll hang loose here with the final exam film. If we end up back in class, we'll watch a film. Uh, do the final exam based on that. If we're not back in class, we're just going to if we're going to finish out online, and that's not my decision, right? That's up to the president. Um, we'll have to make adjustments there. We'll, we'll figure something out. Um, but make sure you you have this revised schedule up and going. Make sure you understand what's going on there. I will send you email reminders. It's very important uh, as we move to the online format. You check your D two L email, D two L email every day, right? Um, uh, same thing with me. I'll be checking mine every day as well to see if you have questions. And the big trick about moving online is if you have a question, ask. Don't sit there staring at your screen wondering, you know, if you don't quite understand something I've said or you don't understand part of an assignment. Uh, you got to ask questions. And uh, I can't, in class I can look at you and kind of see, you know, if you're looking confused or something. I can't do that uh, through uh, my computer screen, right? So you got to ask questions when you have them. Even if it's a dumb question, <laughs> when you get the answer back, you're like, ah, I should have known that. So don't worry about it. That, that's, that's just how online classes work. you got to ask the questions, you get the answers, and you move on with life, right? Um, but that's the schedule. Um, I'm going to do a YouTube video number two for this class, going over how to use the databases right after I do this one. Uh, but for right now, I want to go over the APA uh, medical essay assignment. Uh, for this one, uh, you're going to write a 1,250-word minimum narrative research essay. Hopefully, word count's not scaring you too much anymore. Uh, it's not like, oh boy, I get to write a big essay. Uh, but, you know, 1,200, 1,500, 2,000 words uh, should be, like, well, I can do that, right? Uh, we've already done that pretty much with the career essay. Uh, we're just going to start changing our topics around a little bit, uh, increasing the critical thinking level of some of this stuff. Uh, but it's going to be a narr narrative essay. You're going to tell someone's story, and you're going to put the research into that story. Uh, it can be on the medical top, whatever me medical topic uh, uh, you want to write about it. But again, it has to be you know something somebody you you know or, or something you've gone through. Uh, you have to be able to talk to that person, or you know obviously you can talk to yourself. Uh, but about half the essay should be the narr the story. The other half should be the research. Uh, I don't don't get all mathy on us there, but uh, somewhere around that range. Um, uh, just go over some of the basic assignment, the basic uh, 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 parameters. Uh, should be avoiding that three-point thesis. Should be getting away from that a little bit. We've got got away from that with career essay. I'm going to stay away from that a little bit. Uh, this essay is going to be bigger than uh, than being able to narrow it down to three points. Again, uh, you're going to tell that person's story and put the research into it. Uh, keep in mind as you think about this, it doesn't have to be a, a life or death kind of experience. It doesn't have to be you know, brain cancer or something like that. Um, I've had good ones on peanut allergies or ACL tears, uh, things like that. Uh, it kind of just depends on what you, what, what, what's happening in your life, of, you know, who's around you. Uh, and again, if you're thinking, well, I've never had anything happen. Well, your mother's had something happen that's very significant. You know, whoever, you know when somebody gives birth to you, that's a pretty major medical experience. Uh, you may not be able to talk to your mother or whatever, you know, so you may have to choose something else. But 
Uh, again, don't try and make it. Don't try and think somebody has to have gone gone through something life threatening. It, it can be kind of uh, if you if somebody has the coronavirus, <laughs> you got a good essay topic right there, right? Uh, hopefully that they don't, uh, or the flu, or it, it can be you know any kind of medical topic like that. Um, uh, the other point is you want to make sure you can research it. I uh, want to make sure you're not uh, a, a commit, admitting to any crimes. If you talk about Uncle Joe's, how uh, Uncle Jill uses medical marijuana for his glaucoma, I'm going to point out, you know, we don't have that in Tennessee, and you're about to <laughs> get Uncle Joe in, in trouble there. Um, but we'll work with topics a little bit when we get back next week. Make sure we, we're narrowing the topic down to something you can write a good essay on. I uh, should have three good sources. Uh, they should be authoritative. They should be peer-reviewed. Uh, you should know who wrote it, and other doctors should have reviewed that information if you're given medical information there. Uh, if you're talking about uh, your person's experience, you can use medical records or things like that if you want to. It gets a little dicey, but it's, uh, you can if you want to. Uh, also, we're going to we're going to post these in a D2L ePortfolio, and others might see it, so don't write about anything you don't want other people to know about. And make sure if you're doing somebody else, you're asking them permission for that, right? Um, but I'm going to show you how to use the databases with the next uh, video. Uh, you should have at least two images in your essay. Those are kind of up to you. Uh, but if you're doing something like an ACL tear, don't spend five paragraphs trying to describe anatomy. Show me a picture and insert an arrow and say, hey, here's your ACL right here. And this is you know, what it looks like when it's torn. Uh, you do need to cite the sources of those images, which we'll talk about when we get into the essay next week. Uh, those don't count as your required sources above. Uh, but again, once you get into the databases, there's some really good sources that are going to be very comprehensive. Uh, so one, one reason we're only using three sources, at, why that's the minimum, is because they tend to start saying the same thing over and over, right? Uh, should have a long quote, short quote, summary, and paraphrase. You're going to see with APA, they're pretty much exactly the same. Uh, you just cite things a little bit differently. Uh, and you're going to be getting into that with one of the journal entries. I can't remember exactly which, which number, probably seven. Uh, you're going to have to have all the fun punctuation. Uh, you're going to be using figurative language naturally, probably throughout without even thinking about it, but uh, make sure it's in there. Uh, and you want to avoid you. You're not telling the, the reader how, how to deal with the disease. You're telling us about somebody you know or how you've gone through that, that, that medical problem, right? Uh, you might use you as a hook at the beginning. Uh, you're going to notice with the sample essay, uh, they, they like to, uh, students like to use you. you know, have you ever lost your keys? Have you done, locked yourself out of the house? Blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, <laughs> and then you're going to go on and talk about Alzheimer's and dementia. Hopefully, you're going to say like, "Well, that's pretty normal," but you know, when these things start repeating themselves or start seeing a pattern, uh, something to watch out for. Um, when you think about an essay on a medical topic, kind of notice that the, it's going to be a kind of a process essay. Uh, one day you're feeling normal, happy, and healthy. Then you start getting symptoms, and the symptoms get bad enough, you actually go to the doctor and get a diagnosis and a you know. A, a, actual name for the ailment, uh, then hopefully the doctor provides some kind of treatment. Uh, you see the results of the treatment, or maybe you have to do other treatments. Uh, then you get a sense of how your future is going to turn out. Uh, hopefully it's good, but not all diseases. If you get Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, uh, they don't have happy endings usually, right? Um, then kind of towards the end of the essay, what's the main point of it? Uh, do we need more money for research? Uh, you just kind of uh, appreciating someone's life and you know th the fact that they went through this kind of thing. Uh, is there some, some kind of call to action you're trying to get the reader to uh, uh, deal with? Uh, also, this essay will be a bit of comparison. You're going to be comparing your research to the experience of that particular person, right? Does she have, does she have the worst form of breast cancer, or does she get lucky and catch it early? Uh, and comparing this person's experience to that research makes it a much more interesting essay than just uh, a, a basic research essay on, say, breast cancer or something uh, with no story attached to it. It gets kind of... Kind of, you kind of get detached as a reader, right? But if you're hearing someone's story and seeing their experience, you kind of get more emotionally involved in it. Um, so make sure you're thinking about uh, a good topic. The trick is to narrow it down. Uh, sometimes topics kind of narrow them down, narrow, narrow, them, narrow themselves down naturally. Uh, if you're going to do something like an ACL tear, there are really no symptoms. You jumped up for the soccer ball, missed, and landed funny on your knee, and pop down you went, right? Um, and usually the diagnosis generally fairly quick. Sometimes doctors mess that up. And you might get more into spending a lot of time on the therapy, the rehab, what it takes to get back into um, fighting shape, so to speak. Um, some diseases, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to narrow this down. You can't do a 1,250-word essay on Alzheimer's or somebody's Alzheimer's. It's too big of a topic. you got to figure out 
how you want to narrow that down? Do you want to talk about how to how to how to take care of someone in late stages of Alzheimer's? Do you want to talk about the early detection of it? Uh, what are you going to focus on within your essay? And that's one thing we'll work with next week as you start um, telling me what your topic is going to be. Um, but if I kind of say, you know, you need to narrow that down a bit, uh, I'm trying to help you make, not write your first book, right? I'm not trying to be negative in any way because uh, 1,250 words sounds like a lot, but when you get into it, it's not really. Um, and you want to narrow that topic down to something you can work with. Um, but we'll start working with this. For first thing to do is get those, uh, start getting those journals done. Again, I'll show you how to use the databases in the next video. Uh, and again, you want to ask questions. If you have like two or three uh, topics you're thinking about, email me with the three topics, and I'll be happy to kind of say, I'd go with this one or avoid that one. Because there's some things you want to avoid. You want to avoid talking about somebody who may have died recently. You might be too emotionally attached to want to write about it uh, and see the research and things like that. Uh, it kind of depends on you. It's... Um, what you've gone through, what people around you have gone through, and what you're willing to work with. Um, but we'll talk. That's about all I got to say. Uh, we'll talk to you later. And let, uh, bye bye.